ओवर ईट बाय हिल्डा डू लिटिल एच डी स्ट्रक्चर समरी एनालिसिस हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द डिस्कोर्स हिल्डा डू लिटिल वॉज एन अमेरिकन मॉडर्निस्ट पोर्ट हु बिगैन एज अ पार्ट ऑफ द इन्फ्लुएंशियल इमेजिस्ट मॉडर्निस्ट पोर्ट्स ग्रुप इनिशिएट बाई एज अपाउंड बट लेटर ऑन टर्न टूवर्ड्स अ वाइडर वेराइटी ऑफ फॉर्म्स इंक्लूडिंग फिक्शन मेमोयर एंड वर्स ड्रामा She was born on 10th September 1886 in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and died on September 27, 1961. As a poet, she chose to write under the name H D and became famous by that acronym. Hilda was a student of Greek mythology and literature at Bryn Mawr College, Pennsylvania, and she continued to use elements of Greek mythology in her poems and other literary works throughout her life. In 1901 she came in contact with Ezra Pound and she was hugely impressed by him. They developed an on and off romantic relationship and remained close friends throughout their life. However, Hilda's family wasn't in favor of their marriage and hence she married Richard Eldington in 1913. Ezra Pound suggested the pseudonym HD to Hilda as she felt that Hilda Doolittle is an old-fashioned and quaint name. HD joined Ezra Pound to work for the poetry magazine Blast and The Egoist in 1911 in London and like Ezra Pound she too disliked the Victorian descriptive style of poetry thus they began their modernist imagist group initially Hilda and Pound agreed to follow certain principles in their poetic works which included direct treatment of the thing whether subjective or objective using absolutely no word that does not contribute to the presentation and composing poetry in the sequence of the musical phrase not in sequence of metronome despite her agreement with using minimal words and more imagery in her poetic works hilda continued to use elements of greek mythology in her works one such imagist poem written by hilda do little or hd is titled o read which was first published in the first issue of blast in 1914 The title Oreed itself is an element of Greek mythology which means a mountain wood nymph. Structure of Oreed. Oreed is a first person poem and Oreed is the speaker addressing to the sea. The poem is highly concise consisting of only 26 words composed in 6 lines written in free verse without using any superfluous word any adjective which does not reveal something. HD profoundly used imagery in this compact poem so much so that two con- contrasting images have been superimposed on each other depriving the reader of the possibility to determine which is the primary one there is no systematic rhyming pattern but HD used anaphora in the first two lines and apostrophes in the second and third lines which offer a deep connection the poem is a fine example of imagist verse that uses imagism to the fullest In addition Hilda used alliteration and metaphor in Oreed and compares wood to the sea and refers to the waves as pointed pines and great pines to a mountain nymph the sea is completely alien but in this poem the nymph is addressing the sea and thus she imagines the sea but as her all experiences are confounded into the hill woods and trees she expresses the sea in her own terms summary of Oreed world of sea Whirl your pointed pines, splash your great pines on our rocks. Hurl your green over us, cover us with your pools of fur. Lines one to three. Oreed begins the poem with apostrophe and directs the sea to whirl up. That is, the mountain nymph beseeches the sea to move with all its might, as in a large and powerful storm. In the second and third lines Hilda used juxtaposition as Oreed further directs the sea on how to move being a mountain nymph she has no idea of how the sea is and thus Oreed uses the imagery of the world she is familiar with to describe the waves as pointed pines and great pines Oreed imagines the sea waves as its pines thin sharp leaves and urges the sea to release its energy and consume everything around it and reach the mountains to splash and drown everything with sea waves that are pines lines 4 to 6 hd employed enzymment in between the third and fourth lines while mentioning what to splash oreed uses our to mention the rocks that she wishes to be splashed by the sea waves 
This suggests that either there are other persons along with Orit who owns the rocks, maybe some other wood nymph. Or it may suggest that Orit agrees that the rocks belong to both of them, the mountain and the sea. However, it becomes clear in the last line where Orid uses us that she meant to include all living and non-living things of the mountain including her. Orid wishes the sea to use its might to melt the rocks with its spines, sea waves and cover everything, us, with green water as if piercingly covering the nymph with pools of fur. So this is it for today. We will continue to discuss the history of American English literature. Please stay connected with the discourse. Thanks and regards.